Hi, welcome to this session of learning brought to you by Office Pro. My name is Bonnie and I am a Microsoft certified trainer. Additionally, I hold a MOS, um, MOS, Excel expert certification. And that's why I'm here today. Today's live virtual session will be 60 minutes of my sharing my screen, my demonstrating Excel tips, features, and functionality. After that demonstration for an hour, this will be immediately followed by uh, open session, uh, open q and I'll be able to unmute your microphones or you'll be able to type into the questions pane and ask me any questions related to the topic at hand today. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to look at your uh, GoToWebinar control panel. You'll see that orange rectangle there that'll expand or contract that control panel. And that's where you'll be able to access that little gray bar that says questions and you can type in any questions you have. You can also use your raise hand. There's a little icon there that says raise hand and you'll be able to use that. So if you're having any technical difficulties, if you can't see or hear me, feel free to use that questions pane to type in any of those technical challenges. As a reminder, this session is being recorded, so you will be able to refer to all these great tips uh, at your leisure after the session. All right, let's get started. What are we talking about today? Excel, simplifying your data with tables. Tables, allow you to manage your data so much easier. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you today. We're going to start with creating tables in your spreadsheet sheet. I'll be able to give you an example of creating a table from blank areas and creating tables from existing data. Important, I'll show you how to name those tables that you've created and format the tables using our table styles features and style options features. After we name our table and format that table, then we're going to go ahead and use some of the features when we change our data into a table like sorting and filtering. Um, that's almost the meat of the matter there. Additionally, we'll learn how to navigate our data wallets in a table. We'll add and remove rows, add and remove columns, reorganize, etc. There's also some helpful information about formatting the tables, formatting the table components, right? Selecting the separate rows and columns and headers and moving that table around the spreadsheet. So we will be sure to look at that. All right, keep your eyes peeled on the screen. I'm going to turn off my camera now just so some of you have a, a more full view of the shared screen. Some of the cells on the Excel worksheet can get small. So we'll go ahead and get started with simplifying our data with tables. I'm gonna pop over here to an open Excel sheet that I have. It's just a list, right? I've got this workbook with one sheet named sales, and I've got a company name here, and I've got this great row with kind of column headings. And what's below the column headings, thankfully, are very helpful <laughs> data that follows the headings. What I mean by that is with this column heading says region, and below that heading, all the rows actually represent a reading. A region. This data set doesn't seem to be in any sort of uh, logical order. And we're not really, as this data is listed, able to tell any trends or identify any uh, summarizations or information, really. It's just the list. So let's simplify that by creating a table. As a matter of fact, let me go over to this blank section here in the spreadsheet, and I'm just going to select a range of blank cells. I'm going to use my cursor to single click, hold, and drag this range of cells in the same sheet of my workbook. 
And from the Home tab at the top, my primary ribbon here, my Home tab, I'm going to go to the Styles group in that Home ribbon and select the top part of Format as a Table. Format as a Table button brings me to a dropdown of default table styles, a light table style, medium table style, and dark. Right, so we might keep in mind what style we want to use based on the use case. Am I going to be demonstrating this table of data in a large room? So I might want a really dark style. Am I just going to be using the features myself and I don't really need a style at all? Keep in your audience in mind and keep your use case in mind when you choose a table style. And don't worry, these table styles can be changed all along the way. All right. As soon as I clicked format as a table, I get the create table dialog box, which automatically identified the range that I selected. And it's got this very helpful checkbox. My table has headers. Want to be sure that is selected so that when you select OK, you get a header row. And of course, let's talk about the features now that I've translated these blank cells into a table format. On these headers, I've got the filter buttons, which gives me access to sorting and text filters and the multi-select and search features that we'll dig into in just a little bit. Of course, I can rename those column headers and treat these cells just like any cell that I normally would. Notice the top and I have a contextual tab here called table design. As soon as my active cell is in within this table range, I have a table design tab, which brings me this specialized ribbon that includes the table style gallery, table style options, some more access to connect external table data, some tools that are uh, tools buttons in the tools group for us to use while our data is in the table and are very very important on the very far left here, our properties tab, where we can rename this table. Watch what happens when I deselect or I select a cell outside of that range, I lose that contextual tab. So there's a great benefit of having your data translated into a table. That table can exist within the spreadsheet without impacting the rest of the spreadsheet, or I should say that without impacting the data along the rest of the spreadsheet. All right, that's enough of that blank table. Let's translate our data into a table and start simplifying it. I'm going to go ahead and click this active cell in this data set. Let me take a moment to talk about this data set. Some of us are getting a little bit of a rash just looking at this data that doesn't seem to be organized at all. In fact, this is the way I want you to approach your Excel going forward. This data set is actually laid out very nicely. It has named headers, it has no blank columns, and it doesn't seem to have any blank or empty rows. Additionally, you've noticed there's no summary rows or columns. I don't have kind of a total row down here. I don't seem to have a total or an average column over here. That's a good thing. A lot of us for years have been approaching data kind of from the end point. Let me open up another workbook here. I've got this another workbook. This may be familiar or look very familiar. You've got a workbook with many sheets. Let's say you've got sales from January, sales from February, sales from March, and then you want to summarize those sales. So you're going to typically kind of lay out the report as if you lay out the report as you would for that distribution. Here's the end product. 
you're kind of putting yourself in this box because now you've got this report kind of laid out the way that you want it to be. Then you're going to kind of bring in the sales figures. Maybe you'll start to kind of link it from other sheets. Uh, let's see what he wants to do. And kind of start to do the work manually, right? I think I forgot to double click there. So you're starting to do this work manually and you've got your total row here that's gonna automatically populate and you've got your kind of net profits here and you've already pivoted this data. Okay, so not to belabor this point. What I want to express to you is that we want to change our mindset about using Excel's, all the features and functions. Excel was really designed to summarize the data for you nowadays. So I'm just gonna show you how tables can save you some of that time with like exactly what happened to me, that mistyping. We will go back to this table with this list. And when we translate our data into a table, you're going to see that we can get access to automatically summarize and calculate and tabulate and organize the data. My active cell now is in this data set. I can stay at this home tab and I can format as a table and I'll choose that same layout medium. Single clicking, notice now my create table dialog box pops up. That range is correct, that the marquee is perfectly captured all the existing data that I had because I had no extra or blank rows or total columns. And my table has headers, checkboxes selected. So with a regular click, I've now translated that data set into a table. And I now have my table design tab with its this special ribbon. We're going to be able to structure our data, filter our data, sort our data, get it ready to do our pivot tables, which is really the magic. Now that I've changed this table, this data into a table, first thing I wanna do is rename that table, right? Because often we've created this table, we're going to use parts of this table or all of this table in other formulas or functions. Maybe we're connecting this to other functions in a dashboard or a worksheet. Table two, the automatic name, is not going to mean much to you in a month or two. <laughs> what does table two represent? So you want to give your table name a simple, clear, direct name. Do not want to use any characters or spaces. So we're just going to name this sales 2020. No spaces, no characters, and I start with a letter. Sales 2020 is going to mean more to me and my team than table two will. I'll press enter, and now my sales 2020 report is showing. Those of us that know the name box, let me demonstrate now that we translated our data into a table. I can select this name box and I can see that my table, my range, my named range, my table is there. So I can single click that and it highlights this beautiful table. It also automatically named that first blank table I named. There it is right here. And now let's check out what came when I kind of adopted this document, sales. All right, so someone had started to collect some data or input some data and they selected the range and named that range. Oh, I always do that. And then they named that range. But notice then later they, we must have added more rows but we did not redefine 
that range. So when we go to the name box to select that range, originally called sales, I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I think that immediately my data set is going to be off. As I add more information, it's not getting included in whatever report I'm building. I'm gonna to continue to scroll down to show you where the benefit, one benefit of naming a table or creating a table is that any additional rows or columns that you add will automatically be included in that named range. So no more, for, no more forgetting or having to go back and redefine a range as you add data. Just put it in a table and it'll do it for you. We'll do a little bit more of that in a second. Okay, I've named my table Sales 2020. I'm going to select the Table Design Contextual tab. And let's take a look here at this first group in the Table Design ribbon, the Table Styles Gallery. What's great about this gallery is if you give this a drop down, you get a little bit of a live preview. I'm just hovering my cursor over the table here, and I can, again, choose a style based off of my use case, right? Am I going to be demonstrating in a large room? Maybe I need a little bit of a darker style. Um, am I just gonna be working on this data for myself internally and I really just want the features and the functions of, <laughs> of the table and I don't really need that design. I could choose light and I could still have all the features and functions of that table. Because I am displaying this to you on a computer right now, I'm going to stick with medium table style nine so that you can better see this on your screen. Next, and as you saw, I can you can change the table styles with just two clicks of a button at any time. Okay, moving over to the left, table style options. By default, we see that our header row style option is selected. We see the filter button is selected and we see banded rows for this table style nine is selected. So that banded rows just hopefully makes your story a little more um, easier to read. But if you didn't want that displayed in that way, just a regular single click, deselects banded rows. Perhaps it's the banded columns that'll help tell your story with your data. One single click, if I deselect banded col columns for this particular table style, it'll just give me that darker blue heading and all the same fill for the rest of my table. As we will see, this filter button allows us to get access to sorting, filtering, and searching our data. We do that, maybe we put our data in this table, not only to do analysis, but to maybe scrub the data so that our analysis is correct. Then we might just leave this table on a public dashboard. That might be one reason why you deselect this filter button. It doesn't, it will kind of discourage any future viewer of your data from using those sort of filters. It's still available to you, but we've just deselected that filter button. I definitely will keep this filter button on so that we can use those filtering menus. Similarly, this header row is extremely important. I would always keep that checked, but there may be the occasion where you wanna deselect the header row from your table. If you do do that and you are referencing this table or any parts of this table in other formulas and functions, it might mess up those formulas and functions. So, pretty strongly recommend that you keep that header row selected. Other stylistic options are one click first option, bolds or fills the first column. And if I single click last column, I can also bring attention, bring those viewing eyeballs right to the column I want. Very easy to, style, to access stable style options. What did I forget? Our total row. This total row is a great summary row. If I single click total row, it brings me down to the bottom of this table. And what Excel just did was add a row to my data, named it total. And when I single click on any of the uh, cells below, I get an access to the auto calculation features, those basic 11 auto calc features that we know and love. So 
How long is my table list? Let me just click that count. What's my total sales? Let me select some. Maybe if I wanted an average for my profit, I can click on that, change that default sum to average. Another benefit of this total row is that if you deselect it and then add information or work on this a little more, when you reactivate, it remembers what your last choices were. I'm going to select now that total row sales and notice a little bit of a difference in your formula bar. Excel is using this structured reference. So not only did I not have to input the function for sum of sales, A1 through A104, whatever it was, D1 through 104, did it for me. I also have this structured reference, which is a real benefit of using this table, especially if we're trying to uh, incorporate some of this data in other formulas and functions. So just trust that this 109 stands for sum. 101 is average. Don't necessarily need to remember that structured referencing code. Just know that you are using those auto calculate or those functions, those built in functions in Excel. And that formula bar will always tell the truth. It'll tell you what's being calculated. Excellent. I will deselect this total row for our next example because it's nice to have that total row deselected when you want to kind of filter or sort. You'll tell me. I'm going to use my scroll wheel to get to the top of my, my sheet. And let's start digging into our awesome sorting features. So I've got this table. Let's say that naturally I want to kind of compare year one and year two. Maybe I want to sort by year. I can just simply click this year filter button and I can single click smallest to largest. And there I've got this whole year 2020 at the top of my table and 2021 at the bottom. Easy peasy. But if I wanted to sort by year and then by month and then by sales, how would I do that? If I select sort by month here, click single click that filter button and then select here. Notice that this indicator I've kind of overtaken. Now I'm sorting by month as this filter button tells me month column is being sorted with that ascending arrow. But the year column is no longer being sorted. So this is where I can introduce us to the fact that there are added features in tables. It's added in addition to our existing features and functions of Excel. So to do a multi-sort, multi-level sort on this table, I'm just clicking and dragging here. What I can do is select the data tab to give me the data ribbon. And I'm going to use the multi-sort feature on the sort and filter group. In this sort box now, I can add multiple levels. So let's say again, what did I say? I'd like to do year first, and I'm just regular clicking, and I get smallest to largest is that order. And now I want to add a level, and then I want to sort by month. And then let's add those sales figures. And I want to do sales. And how about we change our sales order? I'd want to distribute those largest to smallest. That makes more sense to me in my manager. And I will select OK. Let's go to the top. And now I can see that my filter button indicators show that the year is being sorted, the month is being sorted, and the sales are being sorted. Makes my brain work a little easier there with that. The data is starting to make sense now. Yeah, I know. We don't sort months by alphabetical. We sort month by the calendar order. Let's go back to that multi-sort. Single click there. It brings up our existing sort. And isn't this nice since it's a table? The perfect range pops up. Let's change that sorted month instead of from A to Z. Let's change this to a custom order. It's not really custom. It's built into Excel. Click custom lift, list and I can select January, February, March. 
Now it really is going to make more sense. All right. Now in my table, I can see the years 2021. I can see how we did in January and the top of the month will appear. Let's see if I've got a better month than January. Oh, all right. Perry and Frank had a good July. We can see July in 2020 um, by um, uh, order of sales. I can clear that existing sort one by one. Um, well, actually, I can clear that multi sort by just overwriting. So if I didn't any longer want to have that, or I could also say as a word of warning, if I were to select region now and then sort A to Z, that will kind of overtake and then resort that table by region and obviously not sort by those multi-level again. All right, let me go back to table design. Let's move on to our next topic, filtering the data. Let's filter the data within this table. Our filter buttons, and I know some of us have used the filter buttons with our data without it being in a table before. But let's just see how it works within the table. From a text standpoint, when I click that down filter button, I can search for a certain name by typing in that search box and it will bring me to Perry. It'll deselect the rest of those sales reps, single click, and now I have filtered out using that keyword or that criteria to just Perry's name. Notice that filter button has changed. It's giving me this indicator that the sales rep column is being filtered out and my region is still being sorted. I can clear this filter either by clicking on that same filter dialog, uh, drop down button and click clear filter, or if I were to be in my data tab, I still can access clear from there. Maybe you save this in your quick access. That way you don't have to remember where you are. I will go over here to my product. It's kind of in the middle of the screen for us here. I'm gonna single click that drop down arrow again. And I can also use this really great multi-select tool. So what this drop down menu is giving us is a list of the unique values in that column. So if I wanted to, kind of just take a look at baseballs, it might be easier for me to just very quickly deselect select all, single select baseballs, and now I'm just extracting those products that meet that name baseballs. I can go back to my total row in my table design and remem it remembers what selections I had made there so I get my count and I get my sales totals for baseballs simplifying your data with tables. All right, very good. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that filter. You can also obviously use multi-select, so I could choose baseballs, footballs, and golf balls. Another way to use the filter for text is this great text filter, um, custom filter dialog box. You know, sometimes you, you'll know it when you see it. You're not exactly sure what you're looking for, or maybe you know what you're looking for, but it's within sort of a, a criteria or a range. Well, this text filter button can help you figure that out. So from this, let's, let's go to purchaser, actually. I'm going to go to purchaser. I'm going to go to this text filter, and I'm going to choose contains. So let's say I know I've got a ton of purchasers. I'm going to bring up this custom auto filter dialog box because I want to find purchasers' names that contain the word sport. And I'll just press OK. So now, without having to do that 
you know, it could be thousands of them. So without having to select or multi-select, I just used that text filter range contains and now I've automatically got all of those purchasers with the word sports contained. Well, what if I wanted to go deeper than that? What if the, it contains sports, but it also does not contain city, right? This per, the list of purchasers, I wanna filter it out so I can see only those that contain the word sport, but not the word city. And there, that was a heck of a lot easier than trying to figure out that if function, isn't it? Take a second, jot down your use case. Have you ever been trying to kind of analyze your data and you're trying to filter out without getting too specific? Here's another uh, method of using text filter. We've got contains and the radio button and was selected in the custom auto filter for text and then does not contain. The or feature in some cases widens your net. If I said I want to include purchasers that contain the word sports or does not contain city, it's gonna change my results, right? So now that's basically everything. Additionally, this text filter with the custom filter allows us to use wildcards. So maybe we've translated our, our range of data into a table so that we can scrub it a little bit, clean it up a little bit. So maybe I can use wildcards because I don't exactly, you know, there's too many ways to misspell a word, for example. Let me move over here. I'm gonna clear that purchaser and I'm gonna go over here to product. I'm gonna go to text filters. I'm gonna go to custom filter. And I'm gonna say that this product um, contains the question mark will be used to represent a single character. So if I'm trying to find a product misspelling, I know that I have a lot of different types of athletic um, um, items, these footballs, tennis balls, golf balls. Did anybody spell that word balls wrong? B question mark L L and it contains all of the um, products there that end or have the word B-A-L-L-S in it. Does that make sense? Uh, rhetorical question, text filters, maybe I'm trying to find a misspelling or a misspelling of the name. Notice if I just would have said contains, um, if I would have spelled it correctly, here, let me show you. I've got 52. Let's do that again. Fifty. So that's telling me I've got a misspelled. There's another wild card with the asterisk. It's used to represent any series of characters. So maybe we've got um, last names, we're not sure how uh, that name is spelled or how that product is spelled. So we're gonna say B-A asterisk L-L-S. So now this might include baseballs, basketballs. And then that way, let's see what we found here, 51 again. So now I'm, I'm kind of trimming this down. We know that we've got something that's misspelled in our list that I saw it a second ago. Really great feature for uh, searching out 
what the eyes can't see. Um, but what um, Excel will find for you. All right. Go ahead and clear that filter out. Fix that one. There we go. Now let's look at our number filters. Of course, sales are important. So I'm going to select this sales filter and we've got our multi-select. If you were looking for a particular sales or range of sales figures, we could, you know, just click anything under a thousand. If we wanted to go that route. And it would have our total row. I could also use the number filter range. So maybe if I wanted to contain the sales that are greater than a thousand, just typing that into that field, keeping that and radio button selected, but is less than or equal to 2000. Now I can kind of see which of my sales reps are in the middle there. And I've filtered out and I've only seen those sales within that range. It's a lot easier than typing that if function. And of course I could still decide product sales and basketball sales between a thousand and two thousand and uh, very quickly lets me know who's selling what. Another great number feature Number filter feature for us under number filters are these bottom three, top 10, above average, below average. So if I've got this nice list, I could select top 10. I can override that. Who's our bottom? What bottom? What are, what's the bottom um, five items here in our report? Excel is going to take into account all the data in that table use that column and compare in that sales column, the bottom five sales. I can reverse that, clear that filter, click down, number of filters come down here. Let's find the, who's above average here in this sales? Two clicks. These are our above average. So Excel has taken this column into account, decided it's calculated the average and then showed us the top, right? So equal to the median and above. If I don't like to do my percent calculations, I can find the top 5% by clicking that spin wheel and very quickly do some sales analysis. Take a second, jot down some of that. I want you to apply that to your existing data as soon as we can. All right, we're doing great. Let's continue. I talked about um, <clears throat> naming that table, formatting with the table styles, customizing those style options. We've sorted and we've filtered. Let's work within these table components a little bit. I talked about inserting rows, right? Inserting rows, different ways we can insert a row of data. Let me go back to that blank table for a second. Sorry, I'm scrolling, I'm gonna scroll to the right. <clears throat> if you notice in this blank table, I've got this table sizing handle. It's at the very bottom right of my table. It kind of gives me this visual indicator of where the end of this range is. If I select outside it, I'm not in any table. If I select inside it, I get my table design contextual tab. So if you are starting a project where you're having someone do some serious data entry, it might be nice for you to define this table range. That way that data entry person can use the tab key to maintain this range, to stay within this range. So if I was entering information, uh, let's say my, uh, what is this, a region, 
I'm just typing and using the tab key to add a thousand in sales and I had 500 and 600 in profit. The tab, tab key in my keyboard is going to add a row. And I can keep going and we've got autocomplete that works with us, etc. Tab will add a row at the bottom. You don't want that total row showing if you want to add rows at the bottom using the tab key. I could also use my mouse and cursor and hover over that uh, table sizer, get that dialog, that dual sided dialog arrow, and click, hold, and drag, and I could add a row simply like that. I could click, hold, and drag to the right and add a column as well. Again, don't have to rename or redefine that blank table still has been automatically, that range has been automatically sized based off of that table name, essentially. I'm gonna get rid of that column that I just added and get rid of that row I just added by clicking and dragging my resizing handle. I also, let's, let's uh, go ahead and add some information here, can add rows or columns within my table without interrupting existing data on the spreadsheet. I'm just going to use my right click on my mouse, so the right part of your trackpad, to find the shortcut menu, insert, and I can add table rows above. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> insert table rows above. There we go. And I have not impacted any of that existing information on the rest of that spreadsheet. And I could do the same with columns as well. Okay, I've added a column. All right, really nice feature there. There's another column that we can add called a calculated column. Oh, let me just mention one last thing. I'm doing my data entry. <clears throat> And I forget to press tab, but I press the enter key down here at the bottom row. I've got, I've exited out of that range, right? So tab is a little bit different to get used to, but tab is going to add that row at the bottom. Now, having just said that, there's a great feature called a calculated column. I'm going to click immediately to the right of this profit column. I'm going to create a new column header. I'm going to call this cost of goods. As soon as I press enter, I do go one row down. It's expanded my sales rep table automatically for me um, just by its nature. Now, if I didn't want that to happen, if I didn't want to expand that, if I just wanted to add a little note, <clears throat> the Auto correct option button could say undo that table expansion. Sometimes we don't want that automatic expansion. Another benefit of having your data as a table is this, this structured referencing or this calculated column. I'm going to choose this first row here and I'm going to input a very simple formula. I'm start with that equal sign and I'm going to select sales with one click and I'm going to select minus on my keyboard and then select profit with one click. A simple formula, cost of goods is sales minus profit. Press enter. And none of that, I don't have to remember to do the double click or the click and drag to drop down that calculation. These tables keep consistency throughout columns and rows. And you notice our structured referencing here so that, um, you know, that math or that reference can be used in additional workbooks or for functions. Beautiful thing. Gotta love it. Let's talk about selecting some of our existing components. Watch my cursor. I'm at the top of my table. I'm over here by product. If I hover over the top of this product column, my cursor turns into a, a solid black down arrow. With one click, I can select that whole row of data. If I click immediately again, I select the header and the total row if it's showing. 
So typically you would only want to select the contents of that row. So you could, let's say, make some formatting changes or whatnot. You might select the entire column, including that header, if you perhaps wanted to change the order of the columns. I'm going to very gently hover my cursor over that selected column that includes the header and the total row. I get the four-way cross arrow. Now I'm going to hold my mouse, regular click, and hold and drag. And I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a great mouser here. Let's click. I want to select the whole table. Yeah, I want to select that. And then I want to move just this column within my table by clicking and dragging. My computer's a little bit slow today. Let it catch up here. Mm. Well, I can move my whole table. Let me just add a few with that four-way arrow, certainly. by clicking and dragging and releasing. You saw that pause there. <laughs> That's a, a, another reason why it's not so easy for me to click and move. Maybe it'll be easier if I click over here. There we go. Click, hold, drag, release. Whew, I did it. That's even harder with a trackpad, right? <laughs> All right, so another reason why you might want to click and select more of the header and the footer might be if you want to relocate that column or reorder that column. Typically, we would just do a single click. If you like those keyboard shortcuts, uh, wherever your active cell is, you can hit Control on your keyboard and then tap that space bar. That will select that whole column. Maybe you want to use that in an array function. If I hold Control and tap space bar again, I've expanded that to that header and the total row. If I use the shift spacebar, I can select a whole row. Um, I can go outside the table and select the whole sheet row by pressing and holding shift and tapping that um, spacebar as well. Our um, favorite control A for control all will select that whole data set. Another immediate control A will include the header and total row. May you may have blinked and not seen that. Control A and then Control A again. I like to select that whole table. I don't have to for when I want to move that table around that workbook. Just triple check and make sure you've got that whole thing selected and moved. Right, so what's great about tables, notice now, even if I've referred to that table in another workbook or another worksheet, even though I've moved it on this sheet, I don't have to redefine any functions, formulas, or references. Okay, we've taken the table, we've converted it, we've sorted it, we've, we've uh, filtered it, we've stylized it, we've cleaned up our data, we're all done. Another kind of thing that you can do is you can take this table, select your table design contextual tab and go back to this tools group and you can convert that structured data back to a normal range. When you do single click and convert back to range, you're going to remove the features and functionality of the table. Unfortunately, it doesn't remove the style. So I'm going to do control A, it's all still contiguous. I'm going to go to the editing group in the home tab and I'm just gonna clear that format. So I cleaned up that data, and now I can reverse it back to that normal range. Of course, I've lost that named range. All right, sometimes you just wanna go back to scratch and let someone else incorporate it. Maybe it's a new upload. You scrub the data so that you can upload a user list into a database. I hope that was a great hour for you. What we did was review creating tables from a blank space and from existing data. We named the table, we formatted that table, and we used the table style options. 
We sorted and filtered data. We added rows and columns, and we formatted those columns. I bolded that column, I moved that column, and I moved that whole table. Last chance to take some notes down, make sure that you apply some of these lessons learned to your current work product. Get yourself that bonus. Look like an Excel pro. What I'd like to do is open this up for questions. I'm showing on my screen, you should be able to see a similar GoToWebinar control panel. You can use the questions section to type a question. You can click on the raise hand and I can unmute your mic and we can talk about questions you might have related to using the tables to simplify your data. When your mic is unmuted, you will see on that control panel that you can click there and change that from red to green. And if your audio is working, your mic works and I can hear you. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot. I wanna remind you to register for any future session that we have. Coming up in January 20th, the Microsoft 365 overview, right? Your company might have gone to 365 and you're, you wanna still get caught up in what the cloud is. Let us give you that great overview. In February, we've got Outlook. We're still living and dying in Outlook, aren't we? And we can automate some of your routines. You may be doing the same sort of workflow or click pattern and you didn't realize you could take 10 clicks and make it one or two. February 17th, we have the Microsoft Teams overview. Microsoft Teams is a lot more than just meetings and we'll give you an overview to optimize your, your, your view on that. Should have turned my camera back on. Thank you so much for uh, attending this session. We hope you got a lot out of it. Don't forget to register for the next session and we will see you next time.